Hello and welcome to Shepherd's View. Thank you for joining me today. Let me start by saying that I am so, so grateful for my heritage. The heritage uh, that involves my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and stretches back for many, many, many generations, uh, even to the old country, if you will. Uh, a great generation, a great um, heritage through many generations is what I want to say. And uh, along the way, we sometimes kind of forget uh, what those uh, benefits are. But Lydia Mahabur Singh uh, reminded me of this the other day when she let me know there was a puzzle that had been put together and displayed in the Azalea Place lobby. It is their compliments of the Haases who put it together. So thank you, Ralph and Phyllis, for that. Great reminder. Um, I'll show you a picture of that in just a few moments. All of my grandparents, great-grandparents, and so forth, all the way back to Alsace-Lorraine there in France and southern Germany, Switzerland, um, all of them carry a heritage of, of the Amish, uh, clear back to the mid-1600s and uh, even prior to that. Um, we uh, go back many, many years. I know that the Amish are seen, um, and, and I can say this even when I have family, I, there's things about them that, is, that are quaint and backwards, if you will. Um, they're sometimes seen as uh, somewhat illiterate and, and maybe even weird. And so as I stand here uh, with one foot in the English world, one foot in the Amish. By the way, the Amish call anything that's not Amish English, so that's, that's where that comes from. But uh, I believe that we as English have some weirdities too, if you will, and we could learn a lesson or two from our Amish neighbors and brethren. So as we look at this picture and observe it, uh, you might immediately recognize it as a barn raising. Indeed, that is what it is, a barn raising. But where I'm from, in Howard County, Indiana, this would be called a frolic. Don't ask. <laughs> I just know the Amish in my community called it a frolic. Um, it could be a picture like this, where an entire barn was built right there in place, right on the spot. Or maybe it was simply uh, an addition to some existing building, a house, or so on. It could be a cleanup after a disaster. But I do know that whatever the reason was, it was a time to call community together in mutual cooperation to help someone in need. And the community I come from, it was not only calling together the Amish community, which overseen the project, but many of the English neighbors were on hand as well to participate in the community gathering. Everyone came with tools and a skill. Even if there was nothing more than the ability to carry a two by four up a ladder, um, they showed up. There were some basic elements of the frolic. Uh, one of them was food. I have to say that if you went away from a frolic, hungry, uh, that was all on you. Uh, there was no reason to, to be there and be hungry, thirsty, or in any way in need. It was taken care of. The materials were supplied by the community, or maybe the church took up an offering and pulled things together for that, or even the owner of the property uh, maybe had purchased the building materials and the labor was free of charge, always. If you were the recipient, recipient of this generosity, all that was required of you was to show up to the next frolic, nail apron on, toolbox packed, and a generous check to help with expenses. I remember one such occasion when disaster struck our community uh, down in southwest Indiana, where I was serving as pastor at the time. Uh, you may not realize this, but uh, that area of Indiana, southwest Indiana, is one of the largest Amish communities uh, in the nation. And it was on November 15, 2005, that a severe storm system came through and out of that was a tornado. And it was on the ground moving from southwest to northeast 
cutting an 11 mile path right through the heart of the Amish community and countryside. Destroyed houses, barns, businesses, anything in its wake it took out. And what I witnessed and had the great privilege to even participate in was a community effort to clean up and rebuild. Mennonite Disaster Service was soon on the scene in a matter of just a couple days. And it operated like a well-oiled machine. By Christmas, most who had been displaced by the twister were back in their homes. And by spring, it was hard to even tell where the tornado had been. You could maybe drive by and see a poor tree out in the middle of a field, pasture field somewhere, that was stripped bare of limbs that looked like a splintered toothpick, or maybe a woods that was twisted. That was the only way you were going to figure out where the tornado had ever passed. On the flip side of this, and this is the other piece I want to share, the, the flip side of the coin, there was a tornado that struck Evansville, Indiana, and that Evansville is just 50 miles south, and it struck there nine days earlier. Well, between municipality infighting, code restrictions, insurance delays, labor shortages, and the list just goes on and on and on. The Evansville area was a mess for years, and people suffered dramatically. The ability for the community to come together, and they wanted to come together, but it was quashed at every angle. What a contrast to the community just 50 miles north of them. What I have had the privilege to grow up with, the foundation stones that were laid generations before, and what I've experienced through my life, life experiences, I realize how blessed I am. And when I saw that puzzle, I was just touched in the heart as I looked at that and it brought back so many memories of all kinds of various things that I've had the privilege of seeing, witnessing, and being a part of. And you know, over the last several weeks, I have shared on Sundays from Romans chapter 12 and uh, there it says, behave like a Christian. How to behave like a Christian is how it's entitled in my book, uh, my Bible. And uh, so I just close with these words. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly, affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, and given to hospitality. Let's pray. Gracious Father, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I thank you personally for the tremendous heritage that I've had, and I know many listening to this and hearing this today have had something similar in their heritage. It may not have been Amish, but it would have been a, a community of believers that took care of one another, families that stepped in. Whatever it may be, we are grateful. Lord, my prayer is simple. Keep us sharp. Keep us attuned to the needs of others around us. May we not grow dull in hearing and in sensitivity to those that are suffering and have needs that we could help with. So Lord, we offer this prayer to you, one of gratitude, another of just simply helping us to stay sharp, opening our eyes to what's around us. All of this we ask in your name, amen.